It's great to have all of you here at our kickoff event for the 200th anniversary birthday of our congregation. Uh, you all look really good for 200, so you're beautiful people. We're going to have uh, several different people giving impact statements on what the church means for them and for their age, and um, I want to first start by saying thank you so very much to the people who have been putting this together. Can you tell how much work went into this today? It's beautiful. So thank you so very much, and I know we've got other special things coming down the pike this year. Um, it's it's just going to be a marvelous year, and I'm really glad we're doing it this way, with instead of just one singular event with a number of things to enjoy throughout the year. Let's bow our heads and pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this church. We thank you for those folks in 1822 who put together a congregation who had the faith and the foresight to gather together, who heard your call, and all those who throughout the years have stayed together in tough times, in good times, in all different times, to be your people here in Damascus. We just ask your blessing on this anniversary year we give you thanks for this time to reflect and time to look ahead. And we just ask for your strengthening, your vision, and for the power of the Holy Spirit as we celebrate and as we ask for inspiration for another 200 years or more. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So. Uh, this, this is our impact statement. Um, uh, Dunk uh, has helped us learn how to figure out how to organize something, uh, being part of a community that cares about your health, how the church um, deals with COVID and air fresheners, and exposing more f fun things to do with other people. These are some things that people like to do in church. Uh, participating in puppets, music, and choir, and participating in church services and watching church services. Here are a few things people like to do in church. People have kind pictures, they like to color, and they like participating in music. Good afternoon. Good maybe we're still in the morning. Good morning. My name is Emily Dingra, and I get to represent the younger adults of the church today. Um, I've been here at Damascus Church about 16 years, and that's when we came to Damascus, my husband, Neil, and I. And I grew up United Methodist, but we went and looked at all the different churches in town, and um, in the end, it was kind of the music that drew me here. So, of course, the organ is amazing, and the choirs are great, but... Um, it was a hymnal, and having sung out of the Methodist hymnal as a child and a young adult, it, it really meant something to me to keep singing those songs and have that be a part of our worship every week. Um, I also saw the youth ministry here, and we didn't have too many kids today, but it's it's been a big part of this church, and we had both of our daughters baptized here, and they both got to play baby Jesus in the uh, you know living nativity, and Eleanor actually was... 11 months old when she played baby Jesus so they that year they had like three Marys and they needed an extra kid so <laughs> she, she got in on it too but she must have been pretty heavy for that poor teenage girl but um, another important part of the church for us has been our Sunday school class a love feast class that's been a place where we could read the bible every week we could talk about it we could um, be serious and joke around and um, really explore our faith and what it means to to live that out day to day so um, thanks to everybody for being here for this celebration, and I think next is Wilbur. Wow. 200 years. <laughs> think about that, right? You go out to churches in the Middle West, and they never even heard of a church being 200 years old, let me tell you. Uh, but 
Terry and I joined this church back, I think it was 1974. That's 48 years ago. That's nearly, gave me pause to think about that. That's nearly, that's nearly a quarter of the 200 years of this church life. I said, whoa, okay. So what was the church like uh, back then around 1970 and so forth, okay? Uh, well, uh, first of all, why did we join this church? Well, I think we would say, Betty and I would say, for many of the reasons that are the same today. And that is, when we came here, uh, we found a congregation that actively engaged newcomers to become part of their fellowship, okay? They reached out, and they wanted to be you to be more than just an acquaintance, but one of their friends. That's a big difference, okay? Uh, but it's more than that. Uh, they were very engaged, all of them, in the Christian life and the activities of this church. It was not just show up at 11 o'clock and disappear. And they themselves uh, sought to find a place in this fellowship and in the ministries of the church that work not only for themselves, but they actively uh, made sure for us that we were comfortable in finding that same sort of spot within this church. Uh, and uh, uh, that, w that was just a, a remarkable insight to me when we first came in that uh, people would be so engaged with you and so engaged in what they are doing and understanding what they are doing just right off the bat. And so we landed here. <coughs> okay. Well, what was it like back in 1970? Well, Damascus was still a small town. We moved here. Uh, we had to go to Gatesburg, the food shop. There was no uh, supermarket, right? Uh, uh, the Safeway came in, I think, 1973 or 74, 75, someplace in there, okay? So it was very much like, you could, yeah, there's places to shop for food, but nothing like a supermarket. Uh, so uh, it was still very much like a small uh, far, uh, town and a lot of farmers around and, and just uh, a lot of real active people around as well. Okay, well, that also meant also the church, since the town was growing, that the church was growing, okay? But in many ways back then, the church was operating uh, like a small country church, just like the town it was in. And uh, even though it did that uh, in terms of its structure and, its, and, its, its, and so forth, how it generally got things done, uh, it all worked, okay? Uh, uh, we had uh, both a senior pastor and an associate at that time. Uh, uh, Reverend Depro was a senior pastor. And, uh, but as the years passed, as the, you know, as the years became decades and that sort of thing, uh, there were changes that were needed to be done both internally in the church and externally as terms of what was happening in the town uh, that resulted in complexities that you just could not uh, ignore as you lived within this church congregation. Uh, so I thought I'd go down, for example, and show you about the, uh, the church staff, okay? Betty Shambly was the church secretary, which was a paid position back then. And uh, as things got busier and busier, Betty was not only spending five full days as secretary, keeping things going, but she was spending a good portions of Saturdays and sometimes even into Sundays to get everything accomplished, okay? Uh, Dorothy Warfield was our bookkeeper. The bookkeeper was a voluntary position. We never paid Betty, I mean, we, we never paid Dorothy a single dime for what she did, okay? And uh, as we got bigger and bigger, Betty, Betty worked at the, she had a position at the bank in Damascus, so she knew about money and how to handle it and what you had to track, and she did that very well for us, but it took more and more and more of her time and uh, it was just incredible to me before the church finally woke up and said, we just can't operate like this anymore. And we established a paid position uh, for somebody to keep the finances of the church uh, in shape the way we needed to do so we could understand them. Uh, uh, it's just incredible to me what the amount of uh, stuff that she did to keep it going there before we, we changed over to that. But... Uh, 
as things evolved, we had to grow. There was just no, the pressures were there, you just could not ignore it. Uh, back then, we, we did have some janitorial help. Uh, now, as you know, we have a properties facilities manager. That's uh, uh, you know, that's that's Lisa, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, she uh, she does more than just uh, keep track of the uh, janitors. Okay, you know, it was, it's a very complicated uh, uh, set of buildings we have with a lot of uh, needs that need to be looked at that are as much a part of her job, maybe more, than anything else she has to do. But we had to grow. We had to establish a, a, a facilities manager just to keep track of everything we needed to so that this place would work, all right? We did have back then a, a, a musical director and organist. Uh, and many of you will remember uh, Don Murphy, who was a, a very excellent musician. He also uh, was involved in the music department at the Damascus High. Uh, that was a paid position, uh, but it, it was limited in, in the amount that uh, we paid Don. And uh, while Don could lead the choir and do a lot of really great choral work, which we did when Don was here, uh, he once told me that uh, he could not begin to do uh, the sorts of musical presentations that he could imagine and that he would like to be doing. Okay, so we were, we were limited. Of course, now, of course, we have Steve Konowski as our music director and organist. And all of you know how our music has expanded, uh, you know, over the years. And uh, we also now have an assistant, a brand new one. Okay, uh, Amy, if you've not met her, you should uh, say hello to her at some point. But we've grown, and we've grown because we had to. And then also, new, of course, uh, we have the uh, uh, youth ministry director, okay, that's now Tina Kelly. Uh, we've had that position for a number of years now. It's not brand new uh, 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 because of a, a need uh, right now. Uh, and we also have a Pleasant Plains preschool with Tina Kelly, I mean Cora, Cora Horst uh, directing that. So here we are, 50 years later. We have a number of uh, paid positions. All these paid positions have large and time-consuming uh, responsibilities, uh, but uh, uh, because of that, uh, they provide for us the structure and guidance for the kinds of ministries that we get and receive and participate in, and maybe we don't need to think about that too much, and actually, that's a good thing. The sanctuary, of course, uh, was, was here, that was new back in 1970, relatively new, I think it was 1966. Okay, the, uh, the basement was uh, uh, filled with Sunday school rooms, but that was just beginning, okay. The hardwood house was not the hardwood house at all. Uh, it was, I think we called it the annex. Uh, I may be wrong on names, but I'm trying to remember. But anyway, uh, that's where a great number of Sunday school classes were held. And uh, up in the main floor there, where the, where the thrift shop has all the stuff out that you can browse through, uh, that was our large congregation room, just like this is, okay? With lots of church functions over there, and with a kitchen, working kitchen, it's still stuff there for that. Uh, and uh, so food could be prepared, and we could do the kinds of things that, that uh, we'd like to do here, and we did a lot of that sort of thing uh, there, okay? Uh, now, the interesting thing now is that uh, Woodfield Road out here, that four-lane road right there, 1970, that was a two-lane road, okay? The Sunday school classes, I can't remember where the, at what grade they started, but probably about grade one, uh, those little kids were trooping from here over across Woodfield Road so they could go to Sunday school, right? Well, how did that work? Well, it's hard to imagine, but uh, uh, of course we provided, the men provided uh, crossing guards, okay? We'd go out and hold our arms out, you know? And so I would do some of that. But believe it or not, you know, during that 15 minutes or so that uh, uh, people were, kids were going back and forth, 
There was hardly a car that ever came down. I can hardly remember sitting there spreading my arms and, and I don't have to worry about what am I doing this for, right? Okay. And of course, with the kids that age, you know, some of them trotted right across, and others thought that uh, it was just a place to place, you know, skip or something like that, whatever, you know. And eventually, they got across, right? But it didn't matter, okay? Of course, that would never work today. The county came in and put in four lanes. Uh, people uh, brought into houses around here. Traffic's way up. It just would never work. So we made a lot of changes. Uh, in fact, uh, during that period of time, of course, this very building that we're in was built. And that's a result of the congregation embracing a vision about what this will mean in terms of our ministries if we do that, okay? It was a really big deal to do. And, and but so much happened over those last 50 years uh, that revolutionized what this church is really like compared to the way I think about it, the, the previous 150 years, okay? Uh, and think of all that happened. Here's, I mean, just a short list of the building was built, the Harvard House began operation, uh, the missions in Nicaragua were started, okay, Stephen, Stephen Ministry was started, refurbishing you know, the organ, which is a really big deal, was done. The list goes on and on. You can add to it yourself. I wouldn't try to begin to list all the things that developed during those 50 years. So, here we are. In the year of our Lord, 2022. And we're looking back at all these great and really significant changes that have been accomplished over the last 50 years and are now part of our heritage and that we can treasure. Yes, really, treasure and praise God for all the blessings that he has brought to us. All right? And what has been accomplished, and I think we need to think about this, was not done instantly, or necessarily even easily, okay? It has been done brick by brick with many people working earnestly together, sometimes over years, to create the vision for, their, for the ministry here and then working with the congregation that they almost also may learn to embrace it as well. And doing that successfully has given us what we have today. So, truly, it is time for us to rejoice in all that has been provided for us. Praise God. One more. Uh, this You might consider this your commercial. <laughs> the ornaments are here. And I have... Quite a few of them today, if you'd like to purchase one, I'm down in this corner here on the other side of the 1977 quilt. They're $20 each, and you can take enough for your family today if you want, $20 each. And uh, if you haven't uh, filled out a form to be on the 2022 quilt, I do have forms for those over here and can take those today. So uh, again, I think we're about to do a resounding happy birthday. And uh, Stephen, do you have an idea, because it's a good idea to know ahead of time when we get to the deer, what should we say in there to get in deer church? Deer. Say deer, deer church? No. So we'll say deer church. 